I don't know if you're bad luck, but the last time you were here, Craig Ferguson, the yeah. next morning I had a stroke. It's not as I. I can't the... move my left leg, left foot. Uh, I, I was sick. I was near death. I'm so guy. sorry to hear that because, as you know, I adore you. And I, I, if I had power to give people strokes, you would be way down on the list. <laughs> I, I would not give you a stroke uh, ever. I, and I'm very glad to see you looking and sounding better. I'm sorry oh. that your foot still hurts. But, you know, given that it was a stroke, you know, that's, it could be a lot worse. So I always thought of you when I, when I awoke and... Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's good. Uh, tell me about this uh, Hobo Fabulous. Well, you know, it was a, uh, a stand-up show that I, I wrote with my buddy Joe. You remember the horse on the late night show? Joe was the front end of the horse, and Joe and I wrote this. this he wanted a lot more horse jokes, but I kept it pretty much. We had this idea, let's try and write an hour and a half of stand-up that has no politics, uh, and just just is is something that you can go and see that doesn't mention Trump, that doesn't mention any uh, political stuff at all. So we did that. I wanted to see if we could do it, uh, and we did it, uh, and I liked it. But by the nature of writing a show like that, it became very personal. It became very anecdotal. It became very about stuff that had happened to me in my life and stuff like that. So in order to kind of record it, we thought, well, doing it as a stand-up special, it doesn't really have the same feel. So let's do it in a six-part series where the audience at home can see something that the audience in the theatres didn't see. And that way it gets that intimate feel of a, of a stand-up show. You know, do you know what I mean? Like, you know when you go and see a stand-up show? Yeah. It, it's all, it, for me, it always feels better being in the room with the comedian rather than watching it on TV. And so I wanted to try and, and work with that a little bit to try and put you, as an audience member watching TV, put you in the room a little more. How'd you do it? Well, we went backstage. We, uh, we I did some interviews with my family. We did, you know, with, with Megan and with the oh. kids. And, and with the, uh, Ronnie, the bus driver, and the tour guys and stuff like that. And, what we did was as well is that, you, you know these documentaries, do you ever watch them? There's a documentary about Rush uh, on Netflix, that heavy metal band Rush, or there's one about Journey, and there's one about... Mm. Now, I don't like any of these bands, but I watched the documentaries and I thought, ah, I'm a jerk for not liking these bands. They, they're great. They're nice guys. So I, uh, so I thought, well, this is a way for me to make television for people who hate my guts. How did you name it Hobo Fabulous? Well, because it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, how can you get angry at that? And it was also, it was something that Leno said to me. He said, because I said to him, I'm not doing any more uh, stand-up specials. And he said to me, you're like, a, you're like a hobo standing outside of a restaurant telling everyone you're, you're never going to eat in that place again. I was like, <laughs> what the hell? So it's a fabulous it's a, hobo. It's a bad Leno, by the way. Well, you know what? It's as good as I care to get. Each one has a theme. Yeah. Each one of the each series. one of the episodes has a, has a theme. Well, that's just the way it came down, you know. I mean, it's like the way it, once we edited it together, it was like, oh, this is kind of like dad jokes, and this is the one of them. The second episode is called the boy joke, and it was a joke that I did about not about David Bowie, but that, but involves David Bowie, and it never worked. The, the, the joke never works, and the audience don't like it, but I like it. Now, every comedian, you know, a lot of comedians. Every comedian you know has a joke that they like that nobody else likes, and one night. In Pittsburgh, the joke worked. So we left it in. And we also put in the nights that it didn't work as well. In Cleveland, the night before, it died in its ass. So we left that in too. What's the joke? It's a stupid joke. It's, uh, it, the joke is this. I don't care to hear anybody's tweets. I don't, I don't like tweets. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna read what a celebrity had for lunch. There's only one celebrity I would ever want to hear what the, their, their lunchtime tweet was, and that's David Bowie. Why? Because, you know, it'd be like, had lunch today with Brian E. Now and Iggy Pop. <laughs> Iggy had a banana. Brian had a sandwich. And I, I had a hero. Now, it's a stupid joke, I get that, but I, I like the joke. I like it. Yeah, and it worked well in Pittsburgh where they eat a lot of heroes, I think. wonder why Pittsburgh. Just got lucky. All right, what do you like about touring the country? Well, it takes you out of L.A. Now, as you know, L.A. is uh, where I've lived for 23 years. Uh, I've since moved, but I lived in L.A. for 23 years. Me and too. L.A. is one of these towns, like New York, where when you live there, you think, oh, this is the only thing that matters. 
And then when you leave town, you realize that nobody cares about LA or New York out there in America. They're, they're living their lives. And it, I think it gave me a sense of perspective, the touring constantly. Because I, I always had a very uneasy relationship with Hollywood. You know that. You're the only guy. I, you, uh, Henry Winkler, Kurt Russell, and Betty White are the only people I can stand in this town. <laughs> so, well, and weird Al Yankovic. Uh, but, uh, but I've always had an odd relationship with Hollywood. I never really felt like I fit here. And, and Turin helped m me kind of counteract that. I felt like I was out doing, uh, it was a kind of more authentic form of, of performance for me. Did it knock you out a little tiring? Yeah, the, the traveling. I'm not going to do it anymore, but it, it's... Uh, Did you do consecutive nights? Yeah, yeah, I tour like a, like, a, like a band from the 1970s. I get on the bus and it's me and we go from one town to the next town to the next town to the next town and we just keep going all the way through. Was it as much fun as your television show? To do, yeah, yeah. I, I can't. I'm not very talented, so I can only do things that are fun. Because if it's, if I'm not having any fun, you're gonna see it. Like I like talking to you. Talking to you is fun to me. You make me laugh, yeah. and I know I make you laugh. So that's fun yeah. for me. But, but I, I'm not really good at doing things that I don't enjoy. All the types of comedy you've done. Do you have a favorite? I like, I like doing, uh, I like doing stand up. Uh, although I don't know if I like doing it anymore. I don't think I'll do it anymore. Um, I think I'd like to do, I'd like to have a crack at mime. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I've got my eye on a couple of different parks and, and I'm gonna have a crack at mime at some point. Mime. I've never, do you, have you ever understood the talent of mime? Nah, I, I don't get it, man. but, I, I, but you, you can't say anything derogatory about anything, so don't say anything bad about mime or people are going to be mad at you. Just say mime. It's a great form of comedy, just not for me. <laughs> what are you doing for the holidays? I'll go back home to Scotland. Oh. Yeah, everybody. Take the whole family? Well, they're all there. I've been over there for a while. Uh, I've, been, I've been living there for a bit. I thought you were living here. No, I live here. I live there. I'm an international man of mystery. Must be cold in Scotland. That's all right. It's not that cold. You know what? The, the, the weather in Scotland is like uh, Seattle. You know, oh, really? Pacific Northwest, it's like that. It's not. Rains. It rains. It rains a lot. Yeah, but I like, I lived in LA for 23 years. Remember the drought was here for four years? Sure. Ah, I don't, I'll never complain about rain again as long as I live. <laughs> Just that horrible, when it, it gets so dry that your skin's all crispy and stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't like it. I like the rain because I like it. It's good for my skin, is what I'm saying. Are there Scottish traditions we don't know of at Christmas? Uh, well, Christmas is kind of, you know, it, it's pretty similar to what goes on here. Yeah, it's, New Year course. is the thing in Scotland. Hogmanay is the thing in Scotland. New Year's Eve? New Year's Eve. It's called Hogmanay. And everyone, what you have to do is, whoever is the tall, dark, and handsome mem of the, member of the family has to go outside and then the New Year's bells rings and then they have to knock the door. It's called first footing. And they have to bring a lump of coal and some whiskey, I think. It's usually add whiskey at any point. And they have, it's called first footing. They have to be the first person in the house after the bells chime in New Year. Well, I don't know why. Do you have Santa Claus? Not at New Year's, but we have him at Christmas. No, at Christmas. Yeah, he's still available. Santa, Santa belongs to the world. He's not just yours, Larry, just because you know him. You sing all the Christmas songs? Yeah, we sing all the Christmas songs. Oh, we hate the English and a happy new year too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, admit it, do you ever miss the television show? No, I, you always say that to me. You, because the, the, the whole thing about, like I've been trying to express to you for years now, I stopped enjoying it. And if I stop enjoying it, and it's going to show, and I and I I I, might, I will admit that the last once I knew I was going to quit, I loved it again, because I knew I was going to quit. So the last year I did that show, I loved it. I loved that because I knew it was, there was an end to it. But I can't envisage going back to a life where I have to go and do a television show every day. I could not. I would not go back to that ever again. It it, it is it's it's too much. Were you a funny kid? What, were, what no, was your, child, your childhood? I was a fat kid. Uh, was, really? Yeah, I was a little fat kid. And, uh, and I think I was, I was scared all the time. What I remember being as a kid is being scared all the time. I was terrified all the time. I was, people were going to hurt me at school or, you know, really? monsters. Or, yeah, on TV. How, how did you get that television show? 
because you, no one knew you. Well, somebody must have. I, I know. Call, but how did you get it? Well, I, mean, I, I did it the old-fashioned way. I kind of auditioned for it, really. I mean, there were a whole bunch of people that, you know, tried out for the job, and they got it down to me. And Try it out uh, for the job. Yeah, right? they were on. They they did a you know a bunch of people did. Well, they you know, put them on the air. Put them on the air. Yeah, and I Trial. did it too. I did, I did two nights, and then I did a week, and then and then you know Peter Lasalle and uh, Letterman and uh, Rob Burnett said you're the guy. Never miss a beat. Subscribe to Larry King now and watch new episodes every day.